when you are doing radio experiments or computer experiments on a breadboard or whatever uh, there are of course many things to tell and I have for instance seen on YouTube uh, a YouTuber that made a com complete computer on a breadboard and then I of course don't uh, mean what I'm showing now say a piece of wood with brass nails etc etc say a complete uh, computer on a breadboard say the standard breadboard with all these pins etc etc um, I was very very impressed uh, uh, seeing that that in such a way it could work so well but I never used the say standard breadboards because uh, they come with some uh, problems uh, of course when you completely understand a schematic uh, it could mean that you com can say uh, transfer it directly to a breadboard with all these pins etc etc I don't have to show that when you are a little bit acquainted with electronics you will surely know that um, but anyway my approach is like I told in earlier videos somewhat different uh, I make the circuit with uh, brass nails here on piece of very soft wood it's birch uh, triplex multiplex triplex glued together etc etc and I've paid much more attention about it but anyway um, it means that for instance such a such a board uh, made in the way I make it uh, could be that it does not wor will work properly on higher frequencies because say all the wirings here are in fact very long and wh when we calculate wirings in a, say a sophisticated electronics way we surely know that for instance this wire here and this wire here and this wire here will act as a coil and it means that also the wiring and that's completely logical when you know a little bit about electronics also the wiring has a high frequency properties uh, uh, wires can act as coils especially when we go higher than approximately 15 megahertz my experience is that um, you can use uh, in a certain way some sloppy wiring and perhaps I say too much when I say that uh, up to approximately 14 megahertz 12 sorry yes 12 megahertz etc anyway uh, it was only say a first ID that came into my mind today to talk about it again also uh, say related to the earlier video that I published today anyway is this a good way to do it well uh, in a certain way yes and in a surely other way no um, because these wires could be too long especially when we have here a, a chip and that's what I'm working on uh, that is this chip now that has properties to work on say 20 megahertz or so this is the name of the chip 12 stage ripple counter uh, I don't know much I have to say that 
about uh, digital electronics, but my idea was, for instance, to use this chip to make a, not a clock, but a kind of timer. I'm absolutely not sure that such a circuit will succeed, but perhaps it will, and if it doesn't work, I will throw it away. Um, well, of course I always study the data sheet of such a chip, and that's here, for instance. There are outputs, and these outputs in this in this chip are, uh, say, all the, the, these wires are a little bit strange. Anyway, uh, when you have a printed circuit board, that's uh, of course no problem at all. Uh, but here I make the, my experimental circuits in this way. And that means that I have to be very, very careful to solder all what I want to do to the pins of the chip. And then use some, in this case, to uh, clear silicon kit, to keep all the wirings apart, etc, etc. So, I made this today, but perhaps tomorrow or the day after tomorrow, I'm going to work further on it. Well... This is, I'm absolutely sure, quite of quite sloppy video, but anyway, doing experiments and breadboard and more perhaps, that refers in a certain way to the things that I wanted to tell. And of course, uh, there are say certain uh, uh, ways to mount a chip. For instance, in this way, this is the TBA920. I'm surely not going to use it. I only use it, say, to keep all the, say, uh, positions here, the pins, in a proper position. After that, uh, I have soldered, and you can solder with even such a simple soldering iron. You don't need a precision soldering iron. We are a little bit handy, of course. All the wirings to it, and then mount such a chip on an, another piece of whatever material. In, the, in my case, a, this piece of wood. So, mount here. I want to mount here that chip. And then use, of course, like you know, the standard way of doing, making these things. Uh, here is of course the wiring here. And then I will use brass nails here. Punched in. And then I have a, say a 16 pieces chip board to which I can mount all kinds of chips. You can push them in, take them out, etc, etc. So, I know for sure that this is very primitive. Perhaps it doesn't fit to our modern times now, but anyway. And also this does not fit. But uh, all these things are experimental. And doing experiments is one of the aims of my YouTube channel. And uh, well, this was perhaps a kind of sloppy video, and I, I'm not going to uh, say expl explain more. When you want to know more, go to my YouTube channel, uh, to the Looking Glass, and uh, there you can find how good such a setup can work up to approximately 12 or 14 megahertz. Thanks for watching.